We're looking at campsite 29 on Cranberry Lake in St. Lawrence County, New York from the water. You see the shore directly in front of the campsite is strewn with boulders. There's a big stump in front of the site. There isn't any place nearby along the shore that isn't covered with rocks, both at the shore and submerged just under the water uh, out from the shore. So there isn't a good approach to this site for a boat. I'm going to go by that stump that's sticking out. I'm going to turn back to the shore at about a 45 degree angle. Being very careful because there are submerged boulders. There's one narrow channel up to that flat boulder that's sticking up from the shore dead ahead. Slide right in there. Be careful not to scrape the boat on the rocks. and there's no place to pull your boat up. It's quite a step up to get from the water to the land. One nice thing here is that there are flat exposed boulders. They're a nice place to put your pack down and unpack so you don't have to put it on the ground, get it all dirty, covered with pine needles and stuff. So somebody left two huge bags of empty returnable containers. It's good that they're collected be that as it may, you know, it's not a lot of fun to come in and see those there. Right where that log is in the center of the screen used to be a large white pine. And there's the remains of it there. It left some of the logs for stools and tables tipped up on end. You have a clearing. If you look carefully, you could put a tent in here. Firing up against this low bedrock or boulder outcropping. There's another area. I've got my hammock strung up over it right now. Not a very big area. There is a route right across the center of it, basically. That's a war bonnet ridge runner underneath the war bonnet thunderfly. It did rain last night. Uh, even with the tarp spread high and wide like that, and I stayed dry. There's a little bit of a screen from the water by these small evergreens. You have a really beautiful view down Dead Creek Flow, especially in the morning when the sun rises. It illuminates that far shore. I don't believe there's any private property, so there shouldn't be any lights from cottages or buildings that you can see on the opposite shore. And there is another campsite way down there in the arm of Dead Creek Flow. It could just be visible from this site, but it's a long distance off. Your next nearest campsite is actually through the woods behind you. The prevailing winds will come from the southwest and you're out on a point. That should keep it relatively low bug. Now we wait 15 minutes. We've got the North African stew by Hawk Vittles for dinner tonight. Mmm. That smells nice. Very pleasant. There isn't a privy, but there is a herd path along the shore that leads around to campsite 30 where there is a privy. You will come into a stand of white pines. Some of them are very impressive. Campsite 30, in the sunlight. I don't know what they were doing there. If you're at the fire ring, on the far side of the fire ring from the water, your view is basically to the south, out over Black Duck Hole. It's a shallow bay. A lot of people like to come in here and fish. To get to campsite 30, you would round the point that's on the left shore and follow that shore, and you'd come to campsite 30. As with all these bays, you have to be watchful for stumps and shoals and boulders. But you have a fairly gentle shoreline here compared to a lot of the other sites on the lake. Sunset's going to be through the trees. Picnic table. You know, the table is nice. And a bench. Somebody burned up a camp chair, which was not a good thing because burning any type of plastic releases all kinds of toxins. And just out there, straight ahead across the bay, is campsite 31. 
So I guess I'll talk about my big mistake for this trip, which was I accidentally brought an under quilt instead of a top quilt. Well, I could have bailed out, gone home yesterday before if we had the cold night that was last night, or what I did is I made do using the under quilt as a top quilt. I wrapped my feet up in the under quilt just a little bit, took my jacket, zipped it up, and slid that over top of the under quilt to make kind of a foot box. And that worked out pretty well. 